Uh, hello, everybody. I had the great pleasure of being in a meeting last week with Dr. Ed Kelly, who is APIJEC's Chief Global Health Officer, and he was making a presentation to our partners in the U.S. government, just giving them some updates on what's happening on the ground in certain low-income markets. And it was such a great reminder of why APIJECT exists and why APIJECT is doing the work that it's doing that I thought we would share Ed's presentation with a broader audience. Ed did such a magnificent job that uh, I almost stood up at the end and saluted. It was just a great reminder uh, of why we're doing what we're doing and the importance of what we're doing. So, Ed, thank you for reprising your presentation. I appreciate it. My pleasure, John. Thanks. We are building and leveraging a solution that will change immunization and injectable medicine in the U.S. and also in some of the most disadvantaged communities in the rest of the world. And that's why I joined Apiject, because I believe very deeply that our product will be the future of immunization and injectable medicine. If we keep working at it, we will definitely be the ones in front of a big wave that's coming. Mark, as our founder, started on this a long time ago with the K1 syringe, but there's a whole host of people working at the company who are attracted to this. Right now, we are living through the biggest crisis in access to safe healthcare globally that we've ever seen. I've worked for 35 years in this for the U.S. government. I wrote the U.S. national reports on this. I wrote the WHO reports on this. Our company's DNA has two intertwined threads of access and safety. Here is that first thread, safety. This is a beer. We don't show his face. He's 16 years old. He has worked his whole life with his father, who's also worked his whole life sorting garbage in India. He works on finding needles for resale. Globally, there are 1 million people dying every year from infections they get at the end of dirty reused needles. Single-use auto-disabled pre-filled syringe will make a massive difference in reducing rates of HIV, hepatitis, and other bloodborne infection rates globally. Uh, the other piece of our DNA is also at this crisis point. UNICEF and WHO reported that 25 million children have missed out entirely on vaccination during the past three years of COVID. And they're about to age out of the time where we will catch them, which means we will have decades of vaccine preventable outbreaks throughout the world unless we catch them now. And access to injectable medicines is at an all-time low in other areas. Access to injectable contraception, access to HIV services, including pre-exposure prophylaxis, access to oxytocin for maternal hemorrhage, all were massively impacted by COVID and they haven't recovered. Part of this access issue is that we are wasting huge amounts of vaccines and therapeutics worldwide. WHO already writes that they expect multi-dose vials to waste about 50% of vaccine products. And the reason that is, is that you waste no opportunity. Anytime a kid shows up, you vaccinate that kid, whether you have to open up a 10-dose vial, a 20-dose vial, a 5-dose vial, that means you waste a lot of product. When we were in the field, we were seeing 80% of vaccine doses wastage, and that's for BCG. Healthcare teams in the field were ordering up to five times the amount of vaccine that they needed because of waste, and that takes up all of the available precious space in the cold chain. This is a picture of a typical clunky UNICEF box that the frontline transporters take around to try and get these doses there. And single dose pre-filled syringe in plastic will give us near zero wastage. We know that because HPV is already packaged in single doses. That can make a huge difference globally. These are the challenging places where Abject is working. It's a place where they don't manage sharps and, and healthcare safety. Urban and rural slums, rural remote communities, the vast majority of parents have to walk more than 10 to 15 kilometers to just even get to an immunization clinic. The, the point that we are really focused on is community health workers. The last mile, which we've talked about many times, will only ever consistently be crossed by community health workers. And that is true in rural Alabama as it is where we were working in Kenya, working with uh, and testing some of the prototypes with community health workers. We'll never solve the huge immunization problem we have unless we put essential injectable medicines in the hands of community health workers. We believe we've solved this and we have possibilities of working with WHO, Gates Foundation, and others to get a product that's suitable for community health workers and suitable for self-injection. Now, quick uh, aside here, we had IRB approval for this study. We have the Esther is the woman's name here. We have her approval for the video. The devices we show here are not ones that were being considered by the FDA. They are uh, other prototypes. And we did not provide any instruction for the use of Vapiject to see how Esther experienced it. And you can see her face light up. Please, we can show it. Yeah. 
Kama hivi ni rais. Kwa sababu kama leo alikuwa hapa tayari na ikiwa tu. Yangu itakuwa ni kutoa hiyo hiyo. Pima milimita moja. Moja? Mm. Nimefika? Si kitu nimezoea sana vivi. Nimefika? Moja? Ibado. Napaja kini. Hata kimepinda. Nimepinda hii. Nimepinda? Si, 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 si. It's bent. I mean, my feet by it. I can't. You can't? Mm -mm. Ah, yeah. Sad. My feet by it. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. Okay. Okay. Sawa. Love cut. Love cut. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>